from the campus studios of Sarland University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tisha. Hello, Ropecast listeners, and welcome to a new episode. In fact, this is episode number 101. Episode 101. I wanted to talk about that number, actually. Uh, 101? Yeah, because it has a special meaning in English that our listeners may not be aware of. It means a beginner's course, something that everybody should know. Did you know that? You're thinking about universities, I think, yeah? Yeah, that's where it comes from. Actually, this started somewhere around the late 1920s in Uh the U.S. I've come across it like uh, Physics 101 will be a beginner's course, things like that. Right. And the universities, about 100 years ago, tried to harmonize their courses from yeah. one university to another, mm-hmm. and they put numbers on them. Mm-hmm. And so uh, 101 is a beginner's course in the first year. The first one, the 100, is your freshman year, Yeah, and O is a very general subject usually, and the last one means the first in that series. I see, yeah. So Spanish 101 can be beginner Spanish, Spanish 102, would be beginner's Spanish, but a little bit advanced. Yeah. And, for example, Spanish 201 would be something you take in your second year. Yeah. So intermediate Spanish, but then again the first part. That's how it works. Right. But I think I've come across it in um, non-academic contexts as well. It came from the academic context, yeah. but it has taken on the meaning of a beginner's course, an introduction to... So you will find books nowadays that are called, for example, Happiness 101. (laughs) I'm serious, I found this. Happiness 101, 13 Simple Interventions for a Happier Life. That's a how-to book on how to be happy and so on. Rather than calling it Happiness for Dummies. Yeah, right. (laughs) (laughs) I also found a Washington Post article that says, Is it possible to teach Economics 101 to Trump. Ah, (laughs) So can Trump actually learn the very basics of the economy? And uh, finally, it's also used in jokes sometimes. For example, uh, um, a girl might say about her boyfriend, I think he needs to retake Kissing 101, Uh meaning he can't kiss very well. Yeah, okay. So I find that kind of interesting. I think if you grew up in the United Kingdom, you would have completely different associations with the same number, 101. Oh, would you? Yeah. For example, through British television, there is a light entertainment program called Room 101. Okay. And what is that room for, or where is it located, or why is it? Three well-known people are invited to come along to the studio. There's uh, someone in the chair, always the same funny guy in the chair. And each of the guests is invited to suggest something to put into room 101. The idea being something you really hate, something you detest. And by putting it into room 101, you're getting rid of it completely for all time. So that would be sort of a, I don't know, cloakroom or where the janitor puts the stuff he doesn't (laughs) use. Possibly like that, yeah. Uh-huh. A bit more than a junk room, because you can go yeah. back to the junk room and pull it out again. This is meant to be really final. Mm-hmm. But keep in mind, this is just light entertainment. But what does the number mean now? Yeah, well, this is where it's kind of interesting, because things have changed so radically from its origins. A television program based on a radio program. And I think this goes back to George Orwell's 1984, a novel that most people will have heard of, I think, even if they haven't mm-hmm. read it, or they've seen mm-hmm. a film version of it. Yeah. Remember, this is, a, this is a dystopia, a bad future, as bad it was future. then, written in the 1940s, probably appeared in 1948, which is why he called it 1984, and it visualized a world in which those in power know everything about everybody, mm-hmm. and there is just no way of subverting the system. Mm-hmm. And as part of this, Orwell came up with the idea of new speak. This right. is a version of English where things tend to get turned upside down. Mm-hmm. So if you look at the names of the ministries mm-hmm. in 1984, the Ministry of Peace 
is responsible for war making. And mm -hmm. the system is based on the idea of permanent war so that people are always suppressed. They can never gain any kind of freedom. You keep the war going all the time and the war machine means you've got control. So newspeak is propaganda language to mislead people. Exactly. And there is a ministry of love. Mm -hmm. So you would anticipate that it probably has nothing at all to do with love as we normally understand it. And sure enough, in the ministry of love, there is a room 101. Mm -hmm. And anyone who's regarded as an enemy of the system, like the protagonist of the novel, Winston Smith, can find themselves put into room 101. Where they torture him. Well, if you ask what's in room 101, you are told you know that very well. The system even has access to your nightmares. Mm -hmm. And they then know what you most are afraid of. Okay. In the case of Winston Smith, it's rats. So his room 101 has two ferocious rats in it, which will be able to eat his face. In fact, the protagonist gets out of this by betraying his lover, Julia. And she's the one that ends up in room 101. So the idea of room 101, you see, is thoroughly and completely negative. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting that that then becomes an entertainment program mm -hmm. on British television. But has this become an expression in the English language? Oh, yes, now? very much. I mean, room 101 is uh, where you put things you don't want. Everyone is aware of this through these several series of the television program. Mm -hmm. So go, if, I, if I said I hate paperwork, I could say... Put it in room 101. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And I think just a final little interesting point. Where did Orwell get this number from? Because it seemed completely arbitrary. During the war, when there was, of course, propaganda, Orwell worked for the BBC, the British Broadcasting Corporation in London. And he often had to go to a room 101, which was a conference room, and sit through incredibly boring meetings. So this was his revenge on the BBC, <laughs> to name Room 101 as the torture chamber. <laughs> oh my God. But isn't it interesting how little numbers through the history of language can take on meaning? Oh, yes. You would think no, a number is a neutral thing, yeah. but culturally it isn't. Well, think of the number 13 and what people associate right. with that. Yeah, but we'll if we go into that, we'll get too long here. Yes. And on top of that, we actually promised last time that we would do another podcast on dictionary use, Yeah. where incidentally you would probably not find 101 as an entry, but a lot of other things. Mm -hmm. And I would like to call it quits for today. Yeah. And next time we'll talk about let's dictionary make, yeah, use. Yeah, let's make that 102. 102. Good. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye from me too. been listening to Ropecast, brought to you by Saarland University, featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial. <laughs>